Don't you click that remote. Don't you change anything, because if you do, you're going to miss, oh, a really, 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 really good show. It's going to be so good, because our guest is State Rep. Jeannie Ives. She will be, I'm sure, the first female governor of the state of Illinois, so you're going to see her tonight. You're going to find out how the state can take off in terms of jobs and economic growth. That is something that Jeannie Ives knows quite a bit about. You're going to find out how to cure the whole pension issue, how to deal with spending and get it under control, how to deal with and find what's the optimal tax rate to have. Oh, you're going to, deal, you're going to have so, so much if you just, if you just don't click that remote, stay with us, and you're going to watch a really, 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 really good show with State Rep. Jeannie Ives. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics, but also public policy this evening, because as promised, I have State Rep. Jeannie Ives here, and she is going to tell us, what's up? Just, Jeannie, just kick back and tell us about jobs and economic growth. Well, thanks for that opportunity, Jeff. Thank you for having me on my, your show. But um, here's one thing we know about Illinois. Illinois is a debt-ridden state with debt-ridden municipalities. And the only thing that you can do to get out of that debt is to grow. You have to have growth in this state. And growth in the past has actually masked some of the problems that we've had in terms of our spending, but we're not at that state anymore. In fact, since 2008, Illinois has still not recovered at least 170,000 jobs. We've had the worst job creation in the entire United States. We are dead last in job creation. And in fact, in the first seven months of 2014, we've, gotten, we've had a negative net 5,900 jobs in Illinois. In that same time frame, Texas has had over 250,000 jobs created. So what does that tell you? We have to have growth. And you're not going to get growth unless you get everything else right about our budget and our taxes and our business climate. So what would you do if you, if you were governor? I'm not saying you're running for governor. Bruce Rauner, everybody would know, as of the day we're taping this, August 26th, Bruce is the Republican nominee. Pat Quinn is the Democratic nominee. But if you were running for governor, what would you be running on as to what you would do to get job growth going? Well, the only thing I would be talking about is our, our state business climate. And so in, in terms of getting job, gro job growth going, we have to reform our taxes. We have the fourth highest corporate tax rate. We have the fourth highest workers' compensation rates. We get beat out time and time again against not just our, our neighboring states, but states throughout the United States. So until we get our business climate right, nothing's going to happen in the state. So what would I do specifically? Well, specifically. Yeah, specifically what I would do is I would immediately um, uh, stand fast on the 3% or the, the tax increase, um, moving it back to 3% for individuals. I'd actually work towards eliminating completely the corporate tax rate. I think that would give a big show to corporations and to other small businesses that we are serious about job creation and, and serious about um, economic growth in this state. I would find a way to better fund our infrastructure projects, which are critical to our growth. And um, I would, you know, overall revamp our regulatory um, experience that you have in Illinois. So as you've been talking, people have been watching graphics coming up, talking about the fiscal 25 budget, the fiscal 2016 budget, mm -hmm. whether it's balanced, what would do, mm -hmm. whether Illinois, a typical household is $33,000 in the hole. So folks, we're going to get to that. Just want to let you know, got a little head. So those are mm -hmm. like coming attractions. But what you're talking about right now Okay, what you're saying has to be done. You tied the business climate has to be fixed. I think you said something about get that individual income tax rate back down to 3%. Did you That's say that? That's correct. That's correct. And, and how soon would, would you just, because right now, tell people what's going to happen if there's no change in the legislation. What's going to happen in 2015? So January 1st, 2015, as is planned in legislation back in 2011, 
the, tax, the taxes will fall for both the corporate side and the individual side. So they're going to fall in first down to 3.75% and then over time work its way back down to 3.25%. So Excuse me, that's just a right gradual. There, it's a, it's yes. a long, long time when it goes from 3.75 to 3.25, right? Isn't it like that, 9 or 10 correct. years or yeah, something? Yeah, that, that is correct. Would that satisfy? Well, number one, if you could, if you were queen, if you were governor, would you like to see you know, the rate go in January, not from 5% to 3.7, but all the way back to 3%. Would you like to see that? If you, if you could say, had a majority, if you were governor and you had a majority in the legislature that supported you, would you do that? Would you take it from 5 to 3? January 2016. Would I give tax January 2015. Would sorry. I give taxpayers more of their money right. back? Yes, I would. Okay. I would give taxpayers more of their money back. And then some people might say, even with a the rate going to 3.75, the fiscal 2016 bu budget, with that as planned, would give you about a two billion dollar hole. That is, you would either need to cut spending by two billion dollars at least, or revenue from the current or increase revenue. You either need to increase revenue somehow or cut spending if you're going to balance the budget for fiscal 2016. So if you took the tax rate down even more. Wouldn't that give you a hole of more like three to four billion dollars? So how would you right. how would you cut spending? Because you, you can't talk about growth over a long time. Mm -hmm, You'd mm -hmm. have to deal with it in that next eighteen months. How would you do it? Well, first of all, there, there's two things working here. One okay. is you have to be honest with the people in what you told them in 2011 that you plan on sunsetting that tax increase. So let's talk about that as the first okay. step, the 3.75, and I'll get to the three percent in sure. a minute here. So if you are dishonest on this end and saying, well, we're, no, we're going to keep more of your money now, what kind of confidence do individual taxpayers and businesses then have in you as to your keeping the promises further down the line? If you cannot have even reined in your spending, when spending has grown over the last five years by over 30 percent, yet we've had a very minimal increase in population and inflation's been negligible. You can't grow your budget over 30 percent over the last five years. 30 percent, say that again. The, the yes, state spending, the, state the general spending revenue has gen fund budget. Yes. Has, has general, increased. Gen, the, what, what, general revenue expenditures, GRE, has gone in the last five years up by how much? About 34 percent. 34 percent. So you can't do that type of Which increase is what, and then be dishonest. Which roughly in dollars. What does that mean? Like six billion dollars So that's like so? six, seven billion dollars. So in five you, years it went up that much. Right. And where, where did it all go? Well, it all went to pension payments. Uh, we, we know that that's the case. Is that where it goes? Okay. So in the past, since we had the tax increase, we've taken in 31 billion dollars of additional money. Thirty-one billion dollars. And it went, out, and it went That's out, nearly it went to our pension fund for state employees, substantial portion teachers, that went to it. so mm -hmm. forth. Yes, a substantial amount of it pensions. went to pay Make pensions. Those pe and yet we're still mm -hmm. and debt roughly, service. We're still at two hundred billion dollars underfunded in state employee pensions, aren't we? Well, two hundred billion dollars if you use the the newer type newer, of right. discount We won't rate. get down in the weeds. Okay. We some would say hundred billion. Some yes. would say two hundred billion. I would say 200 billion. Would you agree with me? Uh, I would agree with that figure. Okay. Regardless, even if you use 100 billion dollars, it's the worst funded pension system. So, so I don't quite get it, though. But so we got that much underfunding. This money was taken in, went out to somehow deal with the pensions. Obviously, they're not a lot better off since we're so still So in raw dollars, the numbers probably 17 billion of those went strictly to pension payments. And then you did start with about a nine and a half billion dollar backlog in um, unpaid bills. In unpaid bills. So our current that. account unpaid bills. That's not debt that we have to service. That's current account unpaid bills. We've gotten that down. Five it's, billion. It's more around five billion dollars. Yeah. So you'd give you'd give Pat Quinn a I'll plus give, for that. I'll give you I'll give you that you've you've marked it down. You know four not billion me. dollars. Pat Quinn, right? Pat Quinn has. Yeah, however. Okay. Out of $31 billion, when you said that the reason we need the tax increase is to pay our back bills, and then it all goes to a pension payment, and then you still don't have substantial pension reform, substantial and real and necessary pension reform to sustain the systems, um, then you know what? You don't deserve any more money until you can you can you focus your spending. I mean, you really sound like a gubernatorial candidate. I, you're making well, my case. Well, here's the deal. You know? I'm, I am, yeah. If you want to control spending, um, it's, it's unfortunate. But if managers won't manage to the level of their budget and they won't get the costs under control because they're in there day in and day out right. and they know where the money's not being used correctly. Uh, we know where we've gone, we've gone overboard in terms of funding theaters and highway projects that are unnecessary and IDOT workers that are political hires 
and uh, the Neighborhood Recovery Initiative that is a $55 million boondoggle. We was have that last pork one, was in that, that. Do you think that was a program that Governor Quinn did, the Neighborhood Recovery Initiative, to spread money around to get out the vote in 2010, and that's how he beat Bill Brady by that short margin? Well, let's put it this way. The Federals, the, 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 the Federalities, yeah. The Feds are investigating the it as in such, the, yes. in the Central District so I'm, you know, I, of Illinois. Um, he, we'll find out exactly where that program's you, going. You but there's no doubt that that was not. Do you have a, if you had a say. I'm not on that committee. Um, so you I, studied knowing the, evidence. the political, the, the corruption nature in the state of Illinois, there's no doubt that the, the, the okay. people should be questioning the use of the money that way. That, what about the IDOT? Now, what's going on there? Well, uh, if, if you, you're aware that the aware. most late. Some of our viewers may not okay. be aware, so let them know from the beginning. What is the recent news in the last few weeks? about the Illinois Department of Transportation that might give taxpayers some concern that they're not, their money's not being well spent? Well, after a, a particular attorney, uh, Shakeman, uh, actually found out that there was a lot of political hiring going on in the city of Chicago and, in fact, the state of Illinois, they came out with what they call the Shakeman Decree, which says that you can only have certain positions be allowed to uh, sort of go through an unqualified route, more of a right. political route, because these people are close to the government, they're policy so makers. So exempt positions, like there's right. 1,500 there's a or so in state government, 1,000? I, I really don't know the whole but whatever it is, those, number. They those, don't have those to are exempt, and service. they don't have to yeah. go through the right. whole regular right. exam in terms of, um, you know, how many right. years do you have in, and, and where did sure. you come up from? So in IDOT, they came up with a special position, kind of a staff assistant position, and this position was supposedly supposed to be one of these protected classes that can be uh, more political in nature, more right. policy making. And in the truth, what happened is, is that those hires were doing just your basic run of the mill, typical. So they should have been government. civil service. They should have but been a weren't. civil service hire instead of a political appointment. So they were patronage hires instead. Yeah, well, that's what it's looking and so like. So Pat, he said, oh, when he found out about it, he knew nothing about it. Yes. And he fired his. IDOT person, was yes. it Schneider, was that her name? Something like that, I don't know. Yes. The Secretary of Transportation of heading IDOT. Yes. So he said, okay, cut her away. Yes. Do you think she was sort of the fall lady, you know? Because she said, oh, these nominations for these positions all came from the governor's office. She said these weren't her friends. They should have said they were the governor's friends. Now, who do you believe? I, I don't know what to Is say Is the U.S. There. Attorney going to look at that, do you think? Um, I imagine everything's on the Pat, table when it comes to What's his name? That's the guy's name. I forget. Not Patrick Fitzgerald anymore, but the guy in the Northern District of Illinois. I, I don't know that name either. Yeah, maybe of some head. of this went on here. So the U.S. attorney should be looking at it. Regardless, I mean, the point of the conversation is is that there, there's there's plenty a lot of, of waste. There's, there's waste in the budget. There's definite waste in the budget. And people if, say, like, you know, Representative Christian Mitchell, right? Mm -hmm, yes. He's a colleague of yes, yours. Mm -hmm. He's on the show just a few weeks yes. ago. He said, Jeff, we're cutting, we cut the fat, and now we're cutting bone. There's nowhere else to cut. He said, on the education level, we know that people are being cut, state money for education. There's no, we're now cutting bone. Did State Rep Christian Mitchell get that wrong? You're saying there's still a little fat left to cut? Oh, definitely there's fat to cut. There's still fat to cut. Okay. They had um, targeted initiatives in the education budget this year to the tune of $3.5 million, not telling us where those targeted initiatives were going, which districts they're going into, what programs they are. It was simply money that's going to be spent somehow, some way. Who decides how it's <clears> going to get spent? I would like to know that, too, and I'm <laughs> the state rep. And Aren't when you on the committee that deals with that I am on the, I am What's the, on the that committee? I'm on the uh, Elementary and Secondary Educational Appropriations so Committee. The, so Pat's mm -hmm. going to send somebody over to talk to you to explain doubtful. how Doubtful. That's highly doubtful. Well, why don't you subpoena the governor? Well, uh, you know what, this is things that I, I will problem. ask, I will ask okay. the budget just passed, we'll see where that money filters okay. to and we'll okay. find out after the fact. The problem is, is we should know ahead of time. But there was plenty of fluff in that budget uh, this year. Okay, so. So, okay, but so give me like, we don't... I'm we, not opposed to a, an across the board cut either to make managers manage to the level of their spending. Would you, you do it like happen? a 10% across the board cut? I would do five to 10. I would yeah. have no problem doing that. That deals with the $2 billion It's fiscal not ideal, you don't like whole. to do that, right. but if you fail to yeah. want to manage the yeah. budget to that degree and root out the, the okay. corruption yourself, 
then there's no doubt that you could find those, those now, efficiencies. Now, just in case, because Bruce Rauner might win, right, the governorship. Oh, yeah, I think he's got a great shot at so it. So do you think, have you asked Bruce, would he go along with that 10% across the board cut? Oh, no, Jeff, don't, please don't put, you know, those words in my mouth. No, because I'm just asking I, if no, you think he would. No, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just out here in my little no, but district you're, you doing are my little work. And you, no, 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 I, no, I've, no. Not, I've not approached this. Is, yes, these I are coming my ideas. Little I mean, Miss Pretty Jeannie Ives doesn't know anything now. No. Because you should know what the governor wants. And you should know what the gubernatorial candidate for he the Republican candidate for governor He has shared some of his wants. budget ideas. And, well, tell and, us about it. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be up here talking about his budget initiatives. Well, who is? I can't get it. Uh, um, I sent him, like, here's a personal plea. Because yesterday I heard there was going to be a fundraiser, which Governor Christie was coming for. Which is so, say, folks, we're taping this August 26th. So I heard that on August 25th, Governor Christie's coming out to spend time with Bruce Rauner. But Bruce is not going to be there. This is funny. Does he not want to be with Governor Christie because of Bridgegate? I don't know. So a guy comes out to raise money for Bruce, but Bruce is not going to be there. So I sent his press secretary. What's the guy's name? I don't know. I, I think that's a great idea for Bruce. I mean, he's just figured out how to double his time and have somebody else fundraise for and him. What a great idea. I really? wish I could get that going. Well, you don't you think know, he he's would He's basically say, multiplying he, his time okay. without even being there. So what I said, great, I said since awesome. Christie's out there talking, wouldn't his press secretary like to have Jeff Berkowitz along with others cover this so the people can find out what Christie thinks and then maybe what Bruce Rauner thinks? And you know what? They never even responded. They're just so busy. So I didn't get a chance to go because I don't know when it was. I don't know where it was. It was in his office, but you can't You know, I was coaching There's, my cross-country team. I was in my... But don't you think we should have a guy Wheaton, running for I governor? I went to uh, an event in Lyle. I really no, have you, no idea. You're a state rep, and you've been there for 18 months, and you're yes. an important person. You're one of only Here's what I do know. Okay. You cannot okay. balance that budget without going this mechanism because of what the courts have started to tell us on how they're going to rule with pension reform. Pensions are eating up well over 20% of our general mm -hmm. revenue explain budget. Explain what you just meant. Explain what to I people. meant is that um, the, Supreme, they may not know, so the Illinois Supreme it. Court came down and basically said that they think that changing um, retiree health care benefits would be unconstitutional, sending a signal to us on how they may rule with pension reform. If they do declare SB1 okay. unconstitutional and we don't get pension reform. So what reform, happens then? What happens then? What happens the, then? Because you passed a pension reform bill. Did you vote for that? I did not vote for that. Because you thought it didn't go far enough, right? That's correct. But you still think it's better than nothing. You would not want it to be held Actually, unconstitutional. I'm not sure that it's... It, well, are you I don't glad want to it hold might, it Are you glad it might be held unconstitutional? Uh, if we get another bad bite at the apple to do real pension reform, I guess I am. Okay, and what um, would you do? But I don't people? like the signal it sends because okay. we have to reform these pensions. There's no to. other choice. Well, you want to do something that would... T in, 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 the, in the state Supreme Court's view, you want to do something that, in their view, would diminish the compensation of the state employees by diminishing the pension. And if they do, in if their you do, view. so right. So how do you deal with that? Let's deal with the real world, not the hypothetical yes. world. Mm -hmm. The state Supreme Court is the last word. Yes. If they hold this prior bill, on, if they do hold it unconstitutional, they would probably hold what you want to do unconstitutional. So what do you do? So here's shoot, what you the, do. shoot the state no, Supreme no. Court? No, here's what you do. Impeach them? What do you do? Here's what you do. You let the chips fall where they may then. So at that point, if you have to fund pensions that are going to eat up, and yeah. I saw a, a, a later report, in fact, I was just reading it the other day, and I, I don't remember okay. the source, I for, apologize. But essentially, I think it was, came from a Moody's report, Doesn't essentially okay. saying that, it, that literally pensions will eat up in the future if without reform up to 40% of our general revenue budget. Right now it eats now, up 22%. That's and it's right. Tough it's enough. A, it goes it's to 40%. really tough. Okay. You are dead in the water. Here's what happens. All those pressures to fund education, all those pressures to fund um, public safety, to fund infrastructure projects, all of that either doesn't happen, it happens with lots of layoffs, or it gets pushed down to the local level, which means okay. it gets pushed onto your property tax base. All of those are failing situations for the state of Illinois, and that's the truth. So if you so want to cut the then? budget, that's why bankrupt? I say. Does that's Illinois go bankrupt? Does Illinois go bankrupt? No, but the do? municipalities are headed that way. So the municipalities go bankrupt. If the, what the, they have to get a permission to, from the states. Already yeah. the Rockford mayor is, is, has asked for so relief. So do you think before then the people could impeach the state Supreme Court justices or otherwise remove them? so that they don't have to have taxes going up to 40% to pay for employee pensions. Or they don't have to have taxes I, going up I to pay really for employee pensions. But that would be, 
Somebody no, should be I looking don't at that. I don't know I the mean, legal Bruce Rauner, ramifications Pat Quinn, of that. Somebody like, if you guys were here, see, if I were in the real press corps, you know, if I were like somebody, I would ask Bruce Rauner mm. just the question you asked. What would you do, Bruce, if that's held unconstitutional, if your pension funds are eating up 40% of your budget, what would you do? And you know what, Bruce? Even if nobody asked you, Bruce, personal suggestion, note to Bruce, tell them. Tell okay. them. You know what? Here, I found the camera now. Tell them because if you do, you will be governor of the state of Illinois because he would be doing what you want. Be transparent and tell the people what well, you're going to do. Well, I think you need to be very honest with the folks right. at this you point and the, your businesses. And okay. the only reason I recommend an across-the-board cut is because the, it seems like the Supreme Court okay. is absolutely limiting our options in terms of getting other real reforms, at okay. which point you have to do something about the spending, and the only way you're going to get the budget under control then is to, is to cut it in a drastic way. No, no, something related to this, education. Or privatize. I'm all for privatizing certain services, too. Like, private, would we, should we privatize the provision of educational services? I am very, I am very open to school choice and vouchers, and um, not only they, we, when you look at it, the, those programs around the country, competition actually delivers a better product at a lower price. And there's no yeah. doubt that we need competition in the educational arena. Where in Illinois, according to the National uh, um, Association of Educational Progress, that we actually have two-thirds of our fourth graders not reading or doing math at grade level. That's a travesty. It's I've a heard travesty it's that they go there. 80% of the black fourth graders in the Chicago public schools don't read at grade level. 80%. That means we have a, we have a success rate of 20%, essentially. Pathetic. So For an average cost of thirteen to $15,000 uh, in under CPS. Actually, fifteen because Kristen Mitchell came on here, and I said, go with his number, mm -hmm. which was 13000 Kristen, that is the number for the operating costs, that because the CPS just put this out. I just saw it yesterday. It may have been put out four or five months ago. The Chicago Public Schools, Kristen, if you don't believe me, do you believe the Chicago Public Schools? They said their operating budget's about $5.1 billion, 400,000 students. You do the math. Their operating costs are about 13000 But you know, Kristen, their budget total counting capital costs, about $5.7 or more. That means their costs are closer to 15000 not thirteen. Sure. So I'm just hoping Christian is watching this, or when sure. you bump so into my, him, my could you explain good. to him, capital costs count. You have to cover <laughs> them, right? Because you know, because you're an economics major from West Point. Absolutely. Right? Yes, yes. Christian doesn't know this. He only went to the University no, of Chicago. No, he, he of course knows it. He's, the very, he's okay. a very smart young he man. He's well, very intelligent. Then why would he say a thing like that? Um, you know, let's be honest. School choice is, is what needs to happen in the future. Explain we need to people more how that innovation. works. Explain to people how school you can, choice You can works. find it in a different, many different metrics. Give me the basic example. So um, one idea, of course, is just a voucher that goes to if you're an underperforming or low income student in an underperforming, you know, maybe the bottom 10 percent districts. Bill. The Meeks Bill. The Meeks Bill is a what perfect bill example. Do? Well, it basically said if you're in a lower performing in the bottom 10 percent of the poor performing um, and your income was uh, low enough too, that you would receive a voucher and you could take that voucher to any private About school. About 6000 I think. I think it was around $6,000. So, but that's we tell the people what to we spend, Excuse me, tell people what we spend. What did we say we spend per kid per year in Chicago public schools? About $15,000. $15, so they were only going to take 6000 of the fifteen. Mm -hmm, that's correct. And that means the kids who were left would have even much more per person. That's right. They would have much more So they more would be better person. off. Mm -hmm. The kids who want to leave get to presumably better off because they left. Mm -hmm. And so school how choice does not that? mean that everybody abandons their public school. Right. It doesn't mean that at all. People are going to choose where their child feels comfortable. For some most kids, it's best to be for in some kids, school. It, it, yeah. And then also you're going to get innovation in the type of schools that are out and there. Bruce like Rauner, one may be more towards arts. And Bruce Rauner supports school vouchers, doesn't he? I believe he is a school choice advocate. Including school mm -hmm. vouchers, yes. charter schools. Mm -hmm. Pat Quinn supports charter schools, he says. But how much has he... He's been there like eight years. How many more charter schools do we have in CPS due to? Well, we had a, a bunch of bad bills last session that, that were basically trying to were trying charter to shut schools. charters down. Did Pat, did Pat Quinn go out and campaign against those bills? 
of of course I didn't campaign against them, he but he for also them? no, he just stayed he just out stayed of it. Stayed off it. Stayed out of the. But he doesn't support school vouchers. So Pat, come on and no, explain to us why. But you he's don't been a bit the beneficiary of school choice himself, he as did. has Mike Madigan, as has John. They Cullerton, mean like they send a, their kids to private been, schools. They've gone themselves. They go to yes, private schools. They've gone to private schools themselves. And who is uh, Kwame Raoul? He was going to be lieutenant governor. Kwame has been on the show. Kwame, come back and explain to people why you send your own kids to private schools and that's okay because you say that's your money. People who take taxpayer money, they can't go to private schools. So explain to us about your black constituents who have low incomes and can't do what you do, send your kids to private schools. Come on, Kwame, come on back. It's We're hypocritical ready. and it's shameful. It's still their, their money, it's just, it's just okay. routed through the tax system. Okay, so education we've covered Healthcare is a major, it, it really eats up a lot of funds, Medicaid, right? Yes, it does. What do we have to do to get that under control? Well, first of all, you know, the, the worst thing we did was we did not uh, continue with the private contractor that we had hired to scrub the Medicaid rolls Why and not? find out the Why people. Not? Well, that was challenged in, in court by the unions, and the unions said that's union work, that's a union Circuit contract. Circuit courts are challenged in the Cook County courts, which are kind of controlled by, you know, Eddie Burke and all those. So Democrats control I have the, never met some of the people you mentioned, but you never met Alderman Burke? He no. controls, he's the Cook County Slating Committee. No, I'm just this so little you know, state rep from Wheaton. Well, you should know, these judges who decide that, these uh, things, they decide them the way that the politicians we, want because they were slated by the polls. Okay. If this you is say like so, poly, Jeff. poli sci 101. Okay. You know the, I mean, you're, st okay. So we got to get it under control. We have to cut out more, we have to scrub them. We have a lot of people on the Medicaid rolls who shouldn't be there. Sure. So when so they first out started do that. doing yeah. that, of course, okay. they found out to 50% of the people shouldn't be there. Now the number of that is going to fall. Regardless, okay. there's a number of people that have had Medicaid il eligibility in Illinois that didn't even live in Illinois. And then we've expanded and raised the income limits. Yes, so um, we, we actually accepted David Medicaid Harris, expansion. one of your colleagues, says yes. it goes as high sometimes to sixty or $70,000 yes, family income. Mm -hmm. And that means the people who have lower incomes, like twenty or 30000 either don't get it or they get less. Yes. And the taxpayers are paying other taxpayers who are making the grandiose sum of like 80000 are paying for their 70,000 people to get benefits. Does that make any sense? It doesn't to me. Okay. So you, that would be cured when you're governor. You could clean up the whole I Medicaid I would clean thing. up the Medicaid rolls Clean for up sure. the education stuff. I would clean stuff. up the eligibility. Clean up the pensions. It's basically, we can kick back, folks. We got about three or four minutes left. And basically, Jeannie, you've cured everything. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, but the only thing is the really plaguing question, and I think, I know you've done but why do, we, why do we want to cure these ills? Because if we don't get our budget yeah. together, if we don't actually have a growth economy, we'll never control our debt, and our debt will continue to eat us alive and eat our municipalities alive. Okay. And that's not good for anybody. We have to control it. Let me just plug one thing, because coming up in the next week or so, people will get to see Preston, Preston Kendall. You may know he is the president of the Cristo Rey St. Martin College Prep School in Waukegan. So this is a private school, really fantastic program, and they're taking low-income students that Waukegan Public School has, same socioeconomic background, yes. and they're doing about like 900% or 1,000% better. So Preston's going to tell you why. But this is what That's could exciting. be done. That's exciting. You could scale this model up if you would allow vouchers, if you allow more charter schools. you would schools. save the taxpayer loads of money. And you would avoid kids ruining their lives because they and had to the drop out. And the parents would actually be more involved okay. in the situation because they chose okay. that. They freely chose that but school for their child. you have to get a child. union power? Do we have too much union power, whether it's teachers unions, whether it's other public sector unions? Do we need to make Illinois a right to work state? Well, I filed that legislation. You did. I'm the only Tell one who has what done that it for is. a long time. What is a right to work state? It, it basically gives workers freedom to choose to be part of a union or to not be part of a union. It just gives them that choice that they don't have to join the union uh, in order to work. We're and going to continue to speak so. as the credits roll, but I so much want to thank. Look, did I promise it right? Is this like a really, really good show? Because not because of me, because you've seen what I do to shows, but because of our guest. Stay Rep. Jeannie Ives, thanks so much for coming here. Thank you. I hope you'll come back. Okay. 
We've got a minute left. We're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but talk about that right to work legislation. Because some people would say, well, if you do what you want, then people will take a free ride. They won't to stay out of the union, they won't pay their fees, and they'll get the benefits of collective bargaining. I think the unions have a place. People? I say that the unions have a place, and if the unions, if, if you like what your union is doing for you, and you feel like they're responsible and they're financially managed well, then you'll join them. They do. They they provide some really Last decent health care. Minimum wages. Should we keep the okay. minimum wage low because it, higher minimum wage will cause unemployment? Yes or no? Oh, minimum wage. Should we uh, keep it low? We should keep it where it is.